Welcome to your Baga Sura Guide. Now, Baga does actually have options as far as a starter item. You can go I or mannequins. I like to go the mannequins um, because of Baka's AoE autos. I actually find that the mannequins mace in the late stages of the game is actually kind of sick on him. Now, you will not be able to get health pots at the start of the game if you do this. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but it does actually transition pretty nice because those do proc on AoE autos. Obviously, Bacchus Ultimate gives you that nice AoE regurgitate, and so it can end up being quite nice. So right off the bat with Bakasura, a lot of people level him wrong. At level 1, you actually get your leap. A lot of people tend to get e minion at level 1, but you want to get your leap. It is going to be way, 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 way better for clearing because it is going to be that AoE damage is going to help you out a ton. You can see I only had to auto attack those side minions once in order to clear them. So make sure you get your leap at level one and you can get your E at level two. So that way you can walk up to this right hand side, immediately eat a minion. Now you've guaranteed that you've gotten one and then you can just walk over to the left hand side. On Bakasura, you are not going to be an early game fighter. That is not what you're good at. We do have the mannequins so that we can fight if it is absolutely necessary, but we are mostly looking for farm. We can farm very efficiently because of our eat and our leap early. He's actually a premier farmer right now. Bakasura also probably better in the meta right now than he has been in a long time. Uh... He was not in the meta at all for a long while, but now that they've got these good auto attack items, Bakasura does have a lot of options in the jungle right now. So not a bad time if you're a big fan of the Bakasura. So we're gonna be going right into the Golden Blade. This is just gonna help us farm without having to use too many of our abilities in the jungle. Luckily, mana isn't really a problem on Bagasura because that Eat Minion does give you mana back now. That was the most recent buff to Bagasura, uh, which is actually quite nice for him. So it's less to do with the mana consumption and more to do with this just gonna help us clear a lot. So you're gonna see that I'm really not gonna go for any early ganking action on the Bakasura. Just gonna make sure that I'm getting farm wherever that farm is going to pop up. Particularly until I get that golden blade and once that golden blade is online, we'll be able to clear camps fast enough to actually go for those ganks. Plus we should be level five by that point as well. So Bakasura, kind of this, uh, I wouldn't quite call him a hyper carry, uh, but in the vein of hyper carries, uh, more akin to like the Mercuries of the world than anything else, um, requires that early game farm and then becomes a bit of a terror into oh, that mid game oh, team fight. Of course, gonna be based around those auto attacks. Now, you're always gonna try to eat the big minion if you can on Bakasura. Uh, because that is going to in uh, that is going to give you two stacks on your uh, passive. You can see over on our little passive bar, we have um, a bunch of little circles. Those little circles refer to the minions that you are going to be summoning when you use your regurgitate. So the more circles you have, the better. Obviously, it does cap out. When you eat those big minions, you're gonna get a couple of circles instead of just the one also in general it's going to help out with your jungle clear time because you can eat those bigger minions at a percent of their health um that will let you clear it out faster compared to simply um using it on a smaller minion where you're getting less value out of that An enemy has as soon as you can finish that golden blade make sure you back up and get it finished a s a p so you can start clearing ultra fast. This is also gonna be the time of the game where you can really start to look into invading. So make sure you get some wards out so you can put some wards out in the enemy jungle as well. For our level order on Bagasura, we're gonna be leveling up our ultimate whenever we can. Then our three 
R2 and our 1. So we actually start off with the level uh, with a point into the leap, and then afterwards we level it last. We level up that Regurgitate first, because Regurgitate is going to reduce the cooldown. Um, basically having reduced cooldown on AoE autos is a very good thing. You're gonna want that. Not to mention it also increases the slow. Then we rank up our three. This is gonna give us that passive increased physical power. Reminder, it's not just when you activate it. You literally passively get power on Bakasura just for leveling this up. And then you get that true damage when you activate it. I'm gonna go over towards this Cabracken. I'm gonna throw down my ultimate. I'm gonna immediately gonna eat one of my minions. And we should basically be able to finish him off. Nike should be able to grab that kill. Keep in mind on Bakasura with your passive, you can get up to three stacks of your passive going at the same time. And your ganks are going to be a lot more efficient if you do get that passive up. Um, either right before the gank is fine, or if you come in for the gank and you like decide to uh, eat your own minion, you can at least get a stack that way, which is a casual reminder that you can eat your own regurgitated minion. It may be gross, but it is very good, which of course gives you that heal and starts to stack up your passive, all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna run over here straight for his speed. Steal that, start to waddle away, and I'm also going to save my point at level 8 so I can level up my ultimate and my 3. Enemy ultimate down. For the build on Bagasura, we're going to be going uh, a fairly standard auto-attacking uh, build in the jungle. I would say the one item that people aren't picking up right now enough as an auto attack jungler is the Icky Vol. Icky Vol is, in my opinion, the singular uh, best item in the game. And so you should be picking it up on your auto attack junglers uh, like Erlang Shen right now, a fantastic user of it. Uh, so is Bakasura. And I typically get that on Baka as the second item. You want that golden blade for the early game clear. And then after that, you can go right into the Icky Vol. Icky Vol is just a stupid amount of power and attack speed that you are going to get. So put yourself right on into that Icky Vol. You're also gonna get a massive power spike when you finish Icky Vol, and you're gonna see that your ganks are going a lot smoother and a lot more successful. And then of course the other items that you would expect, things like Stone Cutting Sword, Serrated Edge, the usual suspects. I got your back, brother. For the standard combination on Bakasura, you're going to want to start off typically with a blink into the fight. Um, if you don't have your blink up, you can obviously use your jump. But as with all characters, if you do use your jump to get into the fight, just keep in mind you are going to be uh, kind of putting yourself at the whim of the enemy team. So just be a little bit careful. You can have your three preemptively popped if you would like to. It really doesn't make that big of a difference uh, whether or not it's preemptively popped. So you can either pop it and then blink in or you can blink in and then pop it. After you pop it, you're going to go right into your ultimate as fast as humanly possible. That area is a cripple effect. So that cripple effect will stop people from using their leaps. It is also a slow good chance that somebody has to actually bead your ultimate now another nice thing with your um, ability to blink in so i'm gonna pop my three i'm gonna blink in i'm gonna throw it right down on the cab i'm gonna go here for some autos is if you use your blink to get in then you also have your dash up to chase so if somebody tries to bead jump out of your ultimate uh for example then you can usually chase right on up with your leap now a god like mercury and cabracken are both pretty dang fast so they're a little bit uh harder to chase out 
we can probably still continue to go gank over here in the right lane i'm gonna put some pressure over onto the athena i really wanted to go kill the kabraken he's gonna try to back but there's just no way he's gonna be out of here and we're gonna be able to grab both of those kills now morgana's on her way over don't really want to mess with morgana because she's kind of scary but i do want to help my team grab that tower and then go back to farming For the kind of matchups on Bakasura that we do not want to go against, Baka really only struggles against one thing. And that's going to be disarms. Um, his entire kit is based around auto attacks. So people that can stop you from auto attacking tend to be quite annoying. In that same vein, excessive block stacks can also be annoying. Um, Baka's biggest issue, honestly, in Smite was just the fact that Shell existed. Uh, but because Shell doesn't get block sacks anymore, that really bumped up uh, how good he was. Enemy Gonna missing. grab a Beads, of course, as our second active, as well as a Sentry Ward. Um, so now that kind of Shell isn't giving us block sacks anymore, it's a lot harder to get block sacks. We'll see how the game kind of changes a little bit with the height of the Nemean Lion, but even then it's going to be on tanks, not squishies. So for the most part, you could just focus the squishies and be fine. But gods like a Bologna who are going to disarm you are still pretty annoying. Um, and Athena with her block sacks might catch you off guard, but it's not like Athena is going to turn around and kill you, right? It's really more so... Um, about those gods that have the disarms that tends to be uh really what gets you you do have a small cc immunity on your ultimate so you can see right there i use the cc immunity to um stop the morgana fear from actually fearing me this is a very short-lived cc immunity um it is only for one second but if you're already up in melee range against a target, there's a lot of times when you're going to want to save it in order to actually get that CC immunity out of it, especially against a god like Morgana, who is going to have so much nonsense that she can throw out on you and try to get you knocked away. So don't be afraid to kind of use Bakasura ultimate as a um, counter CC immunity tool like you would with so many other god ultimates like an anher gets used like that all the time but i find that people on bakasura uh don't use it for that tool as often as they should because they just want to throw it out into the world and go baka 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 as fast as humanly possible and as much fun as that is it's not necessarily always the right place sometimes you got to be a little bit more patient for guys that we like paired with bakasura it's going to be anybody uh, that wants to help him hyper carry. So Fafnir is a great combination with Bagasura. He's going to be able to give me more attack speed. Um, really let me go to town. An Aphrodite would work super well. A Geb, a Kepri, just anybody that can provide a little bit of extra oomph for the Bagasura and kind of let him go hyper carry away. There's not really any bad pairings um, with the Bakasura, but you do just have to kind of keep it in mind. Um, that if you have one of those other characters, you're really going to be able to go extra hard on the game. Enemy missing. Another thing that Bakasura can do quite well is actually solo objectives. Um, so the Gold Fury and Pyromancer are soloable uh, by Bakasura, and that is going to be mainly utilizing your ultimate minions for tanking. So how you would do that is you would just go ahead and throw down your ultimate inside of the objective range, let them attack it, or you can even actually attack it yourself first and help pull back the um, camp to ride about the leash range, then use your ultimate, and then just stand outside of the leash range utilizing your cone autos. And the objective will continually reset uh, to one of your minions as long as they are alive, which in this case for Bakasura, assuming you have all your minions, they're gonna last the entire time. Uh, and that will buy you quite a few seconds to actually go do the objective. So I don't have full stacks, but I've got most of my stacks. 
So this would kind of be the example of that. You would walk in, start auto-attacking the Pyromancer. I have brought it back to leash range. Now I'm going to step outside of the range and just utilize that kind of cone. And then I can come back into the range. Super easy for me right there to go ahead and solo that objective. You can do the exact same thing with the Gold Fury. Um, it just takes a little bit longer. You're probably going to lose a little bit more HP. But as long as you've got a Sentry Ward over there, Bakasura can do it with relative ease. No, I got a bunch of cash in hand, so I got to go ahead, back it up, grab myself that stone cutting, and work my way into the serrated edge as well. Serrated edge, just the go-to percent penetration item right now uh, for auto attackers. Gives you a bunch of power. It's going to scale super well with this Icky Vault and stone cutting sword. And chances are we're going to have most of our abilities down when we're actually going uh, into these fights. Now, Nuwa has ultied. I see these people over here. Just going to walk over, give a little love to, to the Apollo right there, grab ourselves another kill. And it looks like I can also put some pressure on left lane. With this build as well, you're going to be doing a ton of damage to towers. And if you have your passive up with that extra attack speed that you're going to be getting, these towers are not going to stand a chance. So you can also walk up and do these fairly easy as well. I'm going to call for a attack gold fury off this. I have got a sentry ward, so I can throw that down. We've got a Fafnir here and a new wasp. We've got decent secure, plus we've got the increased attack speed. So we should be able to burn this before too many of them actually get here. New wasp minions, another tool that you can actually utilize uh, to tank the fire giant as well. Works just like Bakasura minions. So on Baka, at the end of the game, we are going to be going into the upgrade of Mannequin's Mace, not the Hidden Blade. Uh, one of the few characters that does that. And that is because this all this extra proc damage that we're going to get, all of that is going to be AoE on our Baka Sura Auto because his ultimate simply makes his attacks AoE. So they still proc all of those basic effects. Which is going to give us a ton of value out of that. Uh, especially if we can get the enemy team grouped up in a team fight. We get way more value out of that than we do uh, the hidden dagger. Quite a good item for the Bogasura. I'm going to run directly at this Kabragan. Now you can see I am not going to get uh, a haste in this game. I'm going to throw down my ultimate right as the Athena lands. As I presume she is going to go... Um, for the taunt right there, but she actually waits, which is was a very smart play. You can go the hastened on Baka. Um, it is not a very good item in terms of like the raw stats. So you just have to be careful um, upon getting it because you are going to lose out stat wise. It is a nice item for just straight up, you know, chasing people down. Um, but as far as raw perfect stats if you could stay within range of somebody uh it is definitely lacking nothing wrong with getting it though especially if you're trying to learn the ropes with bakasura uh it can be a nice item to actually um start to learn the ropes with help you stay in that melee range um but i find that right now it is just preferable to not have to get it um, at all. I need to get out of here because it's going to reset to me after that new one. Team should be able to go ahead and finish that right on up. So here in the end stages of the game, our goal is going to be to focus the target. That is the most problematic. So for us, this game looks like it's going to be that Morgana, so she is going to be our priority target against her because she has so much CC. I just need to make sure that I'm utilizing my ultimate for that CC immunity. That combined with my beads should give me plenty of time to bring her down as long as I play right it right. Tower is under attack. She can get a little bit 
Trixie Hobbits is to put down, but Bakasura isn't too bad against her uh, because of his built-in CC immunity. I hear a Athena over here that is dashed, which means that I can actually go for her. He's actually pretty fast right now because he has some uh, haste and proc. I'm gonna throw down my ultimate because Mercury looks like he was coming back in for me and we're just gonna be able to wrap up those kills extremely fast once they got back into my range. Just gonna go for this tower right here. Don't really mind if I take a little bit of damage because I can just walk over into the jungle and I can heal myself up really quick. I can even utilize these cupid hearts at this point. New uh, minions are coming in. We're gonna be able to go right for mid Phoenix and then I can call for right lane as well so we can head right over to their right hand side Phoenix. Your team has destroyed the middle enemy Phoenix. They can't touch you. Clear out some minions, An get those brought right on up. Looks like the team's going a little a little base killy right now because we've got such a big lead. But in general, the right play here is to just go ahead and grab this Phoenix. Now that we've got a couple on death timers and we've got two Phoenixes push up, we can move on into their Titan range and we should be able to go ahead and wrap this one on up. So while Bog is through it, you're basically AFK until you can get that Golden Blade online. Once you get the Golden Blade, you can really start playing the game. You can start going for invades in the enemy jungle, steal some of their farm, get yourself a bunch of extra farm. You'll get a nice big XP lead. Once you get that XP lead going and you get that Icky Ball online, that's when you're gonna get that big power spike. That's when you're gonna become really hard to box, be able to go for a lot more ganks and start to get your other lanes ahead. Just takes yourself a couple of extra minutes on Bakasura in order to get going, guys. And uh, for that last item, you basically have an infinite amount of things that you can do there. You can grab yourself another sword. You can go right back into something like an Atalanta's bow, which is what I would prefer that you get instead of the hastened um because it's basically just a better stat item hasten guys and that is your bakasura thank you for supporting the twitchiest community if you'd like to see more videos make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos thank you for all your support and have a twitching day y'all